Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Asif Ali Sayyid from the Department of Business Administration, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Today, we shall be discussing about the module Management of Social Enterprise Case Studies of the paper Skill Development and Social Entrepreneurship. After completing this module, the students will be able to understand the concept and relevance of social enterprises and get familiar with the operational management of social enterprise through case studies. Introduction to Social Enterprise A social enterprise must be an association of persons forming part of the society in which it operates. Its activities are bound to impact the society as the society's values would have an impact on the corporation. Therefore, they must have mutual rights and obligations to discharge for the benefit of each other. Towards obligations to society at large, it should adhere to honest and ethical conduct, committed to corporate citizenship and have social concerns. It must share the corporate social responsibility and carry out ethical business practices beyond providing healthy and safe working environment and be ecologically and environmentally conscious. The inclusion of five case studies of social enterprises are illustrated to give a panoramic view of the governance and social connect exhibited by the entrepreneurs and their unique business philosophy and ecologically sensitive business strategy. A lot of learning can be assimilated from the five different case studies which call for sharing and learning and voicing the ideas, concerns and questions they are able to raise among the students. This is a rich source of learning about the concept and relevance of social enterprise and their impact and operations in the Indian ecosystem. Case study number one, Integrity Infotech Private Limited IIPL. Integrity Infotech Private Limited, Odisha, Year of Inception 2011, Promoters Balakrishna Dixit, Web Address www.integrityinfotech.in Web Designing Unlike many engineering students of Odisha who aspire to be employees of reputed companies, Mr. Balakrishna Dixit, an electrical engineer passed out from the BPUT in the year 2009, had a different vision altogether. He was born in a middle class family and the only child of his parents with no family business background. His father, who worked as an engineer with the Southco, wished his son will follow his footsteps and join any PSU and lead a comfortable life. But Mr. Dixit, with his challenging and never accepting defeat spirit, could convince his parents and near and dear ones that he wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mr. Dixit was an average student throughout his academic career. He was gifted with keen analysis, power and self-confidence. While continuing his study as an engineering student, he developed interest in web designing. Mr. Dixit accepts that his interest had a profound impact on him and kept him busy with his laptop at the cost of his other subjects taught at the engineering college. The indomitable quest to get mastery on web designing forced him to sharpen his skills in the field or by spending most of his quality time as he found dearth of experts in the field readily available to help him during his college days, but he is thankful to the few faculty members and friends who encouraged him. Why Web Development Business? Mr. Dixit analyzed the business environment in and around Behrampur and found many small and medium enterprises seeking help to design and develop websites to make their presence in the internet world. The idea of becoming an entrepreneur and providing service in the domain germinated in his mind as a student. After developing sound knowledge and skill in web designing and web development, he gained experience and became an expert by developing and hosting websites for few non-profit organizations in Behrampur on a voluntary basis. This resulted in developing good interpersonal relationships and contacts with many small and medium enterprises in Behrampur. He capitalized on the social capital and his indomitable entrepreneurial zeal finally culminated in establishment of Integrity Infotech Private Limited IIPL, 
a premier web and software development company in Behrampur. The products 1. LED lighting system, indoor and outdoor, 2. LED traffic signal, 3. LED street light, 4. Green building material, 5. Water free urinals, 6. Daylight harvesting system services, 7. Engineering management, 8. Energy audit, 9. Lighting study, 10. Green building design consultancy and turnkey projects. It provided industry specific solutions and manages hosting for database, servers, clusters, security management, data protection and more. His success as an entrepreneur was well acclaimed by receiving awards like IT Excellence Award, Entrepreneurship Excellence Award and Odisha Youth Icon Award. Challenges faced Mr. Dixit faced the typical challenge that every sector faces that is shortage of quality manpower for his new established company. He was forced to stretch himself in honing the skills of newly recruited staff and provided e-solutions on time to his clients. Besides manpower, the financial adversaries during the establishment of the enterprise were major stumbling blocks. Instead of having an office space in a posh locality, Mr. Dixit started his venture from home with a laptop sponsored by his parents during his college days with a mere earning of rupees 1000 to 2000 for web designing learnings he learned the managerial skills in a hard way through practice he believes in the old saying that a bird in hand is worth two in the bush instead of looking for more deals one needs to concentrate on the quality and honor and commitment made to the client he espouses on the timely delivery of quality services as new technology is invading the IT space in a rapid manner and change is the order of the day, he keeps himself abreast of the developments in the field by burning the late night lamp on many a day. He proudly says that most companies die out of indigestion, not starvation. One has to be very careful in taking up assignments, weighing the strengths and weaknesses. Greed needs to have limit. It should not lead to apoplexy failures of the business after getting considerable success in Behrampur Mr. Dixit has a plan to extend the business to neighboring districts like Khurda, Puri and Koratpur by the year 2015 with an existing staff of seven members he is planning to increase the numbers shortly case study number two SR Bakery SR Bakery year of inception 2007 promoters Mohanan Chennicherry Bhubaneswar, Orissa. Today, SR Bakery makes several items like breads, cakes, pastries, cookies, toasts, patties, sandwiches, buns, burgers, pizzas, tikkas, and samosas to fill in cravings of the masses. The total annual revenue generated is approximately 20 million rupees. Challenges faced. The initial years were full of challenges as the market opportunity for bakery items were less and there were hardly any retail outlets selling exclusively bakery items. The salesmen had to sell the items door to door. The manufacturing facility was small at Bapuji Nagar and scaling up of business was unthinkable due to financial resource constraints. The recent challenges as Mr. Mohanan recollects as the higher rate of VAT 13.5% on food items and inflation leading to rising prices of raw materials along with competition in the bakery business. But as it is said, a smooth ocean never makes a great sailor. Mr. Mohanan is focused and determined to face the odds and strive to improve upon them. Learnings Mr. Mohanan is now experienced and realizes the competition and changing landscape of the bakery market in the city. To withstand in a competitive market, one needs to be innovative in diversifying the products as per the changing choices of the consumers and introduce new technology to minimize waste and reduce cost. He is optimistic about the future of SR Bakery. With all the pressure and rigors of work, Mr. Mohanan learned that through humility and a paternalistic approach, a committed workforce can emerge. He is a firm believer of training workers to adopt new skills. The staff describes him as a hard taskmaster with a soft heart. Among the trust and confidence of thousands of happy customers, retailers and suppliers, 
the bakery has received a certificate of appreciation for participating in the Masterline Cake Festival. Future of the business. Mr. Mohanan is optimistic about the future of SR Bakery. In its expansion plans, SR Bakery is planning to start another manufacturing unit at Khurda Industrial Estate. SR also faces competition from other players like Mohignis, Cookies, Cafe Coffee Day and local bakery shops squeezing profit margins. The impact of government tax policy on bakery products including higher rate of VAT at 13.5% on food items and the rising inflation have led to rising cost of raw material. Impacts on the business, the bakery business has a large impact on the lifestyle of the people of the city and the employees who are engaged in it. It provides smiles on the face of poor employees by providing them livelihood opportunities, happiness to customers by providing ready to eat quality products to keep pace with the challenges of the city life building supplier confidence, tax earnings for government, stakeholders value creation, responsible citizenship behavior, advice to future entrepreneurs. Mr. Mohanan believes the entrepreneurial landscape in bakery business is healthy, but the young entrepreneurs must be open to technological advancements in improving operations to reduce wastes and costs. The capital city of Odisha has undergone a metamorphosis in the last two decades. Once earned the fame for its rich cultural heritage and architectural excellence through its noticeable temples and forts, the city is becoming a major trading center and commercial hub because of the urban sprawl with an exponential rate of growth. The city has witnessed a 30% rise in population in the last decade since 2011. Average literacy rate of the city is 93%. The city hosts a plethora of opportunities for amusement, entertainment, shopping and dining for its dwellers. At the same time, the city offers a vast opportunity for the new age entrepreneurs to set up, develop their business. Such opportunities are actually, such opportunities are aptly visualized and harnessed by SR Bakery. The foundations of SR Bakery can be traced back to 1965 when the city was lush green. The streets were less congested and neat. The inhabitants of the city were mostly government employees. During that time, Mr. K. Raghavan, a dynamic, suave and soft-spoken gentleman, sensed the opportunity of tourism and travel in the city and business opportunity along with that. He then established Sajita and Choice Bakery and a South Indian hotel. In due course, he established Hotel Venus, which soon became a favorite destination for tourists, travels and vacationers. In the year 1974, Mr. K. Mohanan, a young flamboyant and ambitious boy from Kerala, joined Mr. K. Raghavan, who was supposed to be his maternal uncle. Mr. Mohanan soon fell in love with the city. After his graduation from BJB College in 1978, he joined his uncle's business. Mr. Mohanan had the passion and appetite to take the business to the next level. He took active interest in the bakery business and led Choice Bakery at Bapuji Nagar Bhubaneswar. In due course, Choice Bakery was renamed as SR Bakery. Mr. K. Mohanan, born on 30th October 1956 at Tellacheri, Kerala, married P. V. Sunila and they had two children, Miss Simna and Mr. Rohit. Mr. Mohanan ventured into hotel and bakery business since 1980. He is a gregarious and has deep interest in watching movies, making friends, spending time with family and visiting places. Case study number 3. Eco Tusser. Eco Tusser Silk Private Limited. Year of inception 2007. Promoters Masuta, Producers, Company and KK Pandya. The web address is www.ecotasar.com. Textiles Ecotasar aims to operate a sustainable business in the textiles value chain and create a large number of livelihood opportunities for women and artisans. It leverages the handloom sector's ability to make small customized lots of produce exclusive and well-designed products. Frequent new design releases ensure the continued interest of large clientele. 
Eco Tusser operates in Assam, Bihar and West Bengal. It provides livelihood directly to 300 families through fabrics and weaving and indirectly to 1100 more families through cocoon sourcing and yarn drilling. These families come largely from tribal areas and from the economically disadvantaged sections of society. Eco Tusser or ET along with its parent entity Masuta has stepped in to do just that. While Masuta plays the role of aggregator of Tusser yard, Eco Tusser plays the role of the forward integrator by adding value to the yarn to produce fabric and products and then taking these to the market. Creating enterprises along the silk value chain, Eco Tusser was spun off from two organizations namely Pradhan and Masuta. Pradhan, a voluntary organization established in 1983, creates and implements programs to enhance livelihood capabilities of the poor and give them access to sustainable income generating opportunities. Most of the families that Pradhan works for and with are from scheduled tribes and scheduled castes. Masuta Producers Company Limited Masuta was set up in 2005. Masuta is acronym derived from the words Mahila woman and Suta thread and Tasar works in four districts of Jharkhand namely Hazaribagh, Dumka, Goda and Kodarma. Shitij Kumar Pandya joined Pradhan in 2000 and was put in charge of creating a market for the yarn reeled for Masuta. In 2007, Matusat's fabric division was further spun off into Eco Tasar, in which Pandya holds equity along with Masuta. The silk route making Tasar culture remunerative by improving technology and market linkages, Pradhan experienced certain challenges in promoting Tasar silk cultivation. Although there was a high demand for tusser silk and investment needed for tusser culture was low, traditional communities that undertook tusser rearing were losing interest in the activity. Pradhan created self-help groups, supported them with know-how for tusser yarn drilling and formed a producer's company Masuta in 2005. Yarn drilling and fabric weaving were managed as two separate divisions. In October 2007, Masuta's fabric division was spun off as Ecotusser, a for-profit company. Pandya explains Ecotusser's business philosophy. We prefer everything to be done by hand. If we have a choice between hand-reeled yarn and mechanized yarn, we prefer the hand-reeled product. If we had to choose between weaving on the power loom versus weaving on hand looms, we prefer the hand loom. Ecotusser has operations in Assam, Bihar and West Bengal and picks up the Tusser value chain where Masuta leaves off. The company sources yarn from Masuta and other sources that provide hand reeled silk. This yarn is then given to the handloom weavers who weave it into silk fabric. Ecotusser works in an established market and is also affected by changes in the global industry. Ecotusser prefers to outsource designs to reputed designers mainly based in Delhi and spends close to 6 to 7 lakh Indian rupees that is around 11,000 to 14,000 US dollars per annum on sourcing designs. Since the bulk of Eco Tusser orders are commissioned, their customers also provide specifications of design and color for the products. Eco Tusser provides opportunities for design students in turns too. Each year students from designs and fashion schools such as NIFT and NID work with them to develop new designs for their product lines. Ecotusser sees this initiative as an investment for popularizing Tusser silk. Ecotusser aims to reach out to around 2,000 to 5,000 weavers in 5 to 7 weaving clusters across the country while targeting to reach a turnover of over 20 crores Indian rupees which is around 3.8 million US dollars by 2050. Sourcing yarn, though it's a big challenge, given the volume of yarn 
that it will need to meet plan targets. Ecotasser is clear that it will also have to create a cadre of hand yarn readlers to feed this growing demand. Ecotasser is also exploring opportunities to integrate skilled weavers who can create unique products given the opportunity. Ecotasser's operations in Fulia, West Bengal helps in sourcing Jamdani saris from the weavers there. In order to further widen the pool of skilled weavers, it plans to move into weaving clusters in Andhra Pradesh for unique products such as Pochampalli and Venkatagiri, Madhya Pradesh, Chanderi and Uttar Pradesh, Varanasi in the coming years. Pandya signs off on an optimistic note. There was a time when we had to hire just about anyone who came our way, but our business is establishing itself and we are slowly finding the right people now. Case study number 4 Frontiers Markets Frontier Markets Consulting Private Limited is the organization. The year of inception is 2010 and the promoters are Ajayta Shah and the website is www.frontiermarkets.com Lighting and Cooking Products Frontier Market provides rural households a basket of efficient and affordable choices for lighting and cooking products. It contributes towards reducing pollution and inefficient use of fuel and helps innovative clean energy product manufacturers reach remote customers. Frontier Markets utilizes feedback from retailers and customers to provide manufacturers with feedback on design, applicability and relevance of their product. Frontier Markets replaces traditional cooking and lighting practices with clean energy options, reducing indoor air pollution and chronic illnesses related to noxious fumes emitted during use. Rajasthan contributes 100% of Frontier Markets' current local industrial operations. There are plans to scale up to other low-income states such as Odisha and Jharkhand. The power sector in most parts of the rural and peri-urban India is grim, with kerosene lamps being the dominant source of light. For the rural poor, cooking is done on traditional cook stoves using biomass collected or purchased locally. This base of the economic pyramid market lacks access to energy and markets to acquire products. The market dim opportunity is sizable at an estimated 2.1 billion US dollars and 600 million customers. Frontier Markets focuses on rural households in Rajasthan where Bijli and Pani that is electricity and water are huge challenges. Frontier Market targets customers who have limited access but high demand for quality and affordable energy products residing in rural and semi-urban settings and live in households that make incomes ranging between 2000 to 3000 rupees or 43 to 76 US dollars per month. Frontier Markets bring these customers a bucket of basket of Frontier Markets brings these customers and consumers a basket of clean energy solutions which are accessed and found suitable for market by independent advisors. These include solar lanterns, torches, home lighting systems and batteries. Frontier Market educates consumers about these products and enables them to make informed choices. With an innovative model and customized solutions for consumers, Frontier Market opens new opportunities for manufacturers to create affordable and relevant products for rural markets and helps them with distribution through innovative marketing channels. The enterprise has currently reached 40,000 households in Rajasthan. Solar Lantern, Solar Home Lighting Systems, Solar Torch, Solar Street Lights. Frontier Market provides sustainable clean energy products to low-income families in rural India, reducing carbon emissions from traditional fossil fuels. It ensures improved health and quality of life to its consumers. Based on demand for each product and quantity sold, Frontier Market calculates a social return on investment SROI for each customer 
measuring the social impact of replacing kerosene and other dangerous and toxic practices with solar energy systems and improved cooking stoves. By localizing initiatives, Frontier Market is building solutions for the people within their communities, educating the consumers about different products and the importance of moving over to clean energy products. Frontier Market is creating lasting impact that reaches beyond its focus sector, that is energy. Frontier Market is exploring opportunities to access grant money to offer a line of credit to their franchise entrepreneurs who can stock more products if they had this finance. Another plan is to scale their models to another low income states. The Frontier Market team receives calls from Odisha and Jharkhand where people want Frontier Market's products. Interestingly, when these inquiries are directed to the manufacturers of the products, they revert back saying they want the Frontier Market model of multi-product process in their states rather than dealing with individual manufacturers. This is validation of the premise that Frontier Market's team started out with the need to provide rural audience with a basket of choices, assesses and the products and informing them about the product features and letting them make informed choices for long-term impact. In terms of its relationships with manufacturers of clean energy products, Frontier Market helps them with the market entry and taking a successful pilot to scale. It helps manufacturers build their brands through innovative and ethical marketing campaigns to generate both consumer education and brand value creation. Finally, it provides manufacturers with vital consumer insights and plays a strategic role in assisting the products development for bottom of the pyramid market. Today, Frontier Market has operations across six districts in Rajasthan. The enterprise has begun generating revenues and currently 100% of its 2012 revenues of 1.4 lakh Indian rupees comes from low income states. The company plans to grow from a 2013 revenue of 12 Indian lakh rupees, 12 lakh Indian rupees to 1.5 crore Indian rupees in 2015 through deepening its presence in Rajasthan and diversifying to other states. The team estimates that low income states will continue to contribute about 75% of revenues in 2015. The one thing that aided Frontier Market and Shah to develop their franchise model in Rajasthan, which was a Marwadi local community in Rajasthan's sense of business, even with this enthusiasm, the Frontier Market team realized that creating local team means that they needed more assistance. Decentralizing control and scale was tough. The low income states also had few energy product manufacturers directly reaching this market. Frontier Market was therefore offering producers access to a whole new market where there was need established and through Frontier Market there was now a distribution channel. Frontier Market's relationship with the state government which is another big stakeholder is evolving as they start working with different departments such as the Child and Women Empowerment Department or the Forestry Department. The team's biggest success to date has been with drawing women volunteers from the Anganwadis to become part of their field sales force. Another linkage includes those with self-help groups, farmers, dairy workers and ASHA workers offering primary health care in the villages. Case study number 5 Gram Tarang Inclusive Development Services Gram Tarang Inclusive Development Services Private Limited Year of Inception 2010 Promoters Venkat Sivanand Kumar Web address www.gramtarang.org Business Correspondence for Banks Gram Tarang plans to service 15,000 gram panchayats in 8 states by 2015. Gram Tarang Inclusive Development Services GTIDS works as a business correspondence for banks to provide financial services to rural customers 
in low income states such as Bihar, West Bengal, Odisha, Chhattisgarh and Uttar Pradesh. The company uses a network of local customer service providers and technology infrastructure to provide financial services at the village level. GTIDS has improved financial inclusion in the low income states by opening more than 1.2 million no frills bank accounts, 50% of which are held by women. In the process, it has provided employment to over 4,600 customer service providers, more than 60% of which are women. A sister concern, Gram Tarang Employability Training Services provides technical and soft skill training to the disadvantaged youth to make them employable. In its quest for inclusive growth, India faces a huge challenge of mainstreaming 70% of the population that resides in rural villages. Lack of access to formal financial services is a major impediment to achieving this goal. According to the RBI estimates, more than 60% of the population of rural India is unbanked. Banks find it unviable to set up branches in remote areas due to high client acquisition cost, lack of credit history of clients, geographic distances and sporadic population density. To overcome these barriers and bridge the gaps between banks and rural populations, new form of branchless banking options have emerged. Banks are leveraging advances in information technology in order to provide financial services in remote rural areas through business correspondence such as NGOs, self-help groups, microfinance institutions, non-banking financial companies, Gram Tarang Inclusive Development Services is a setup operation in Bihar, Assam, West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh. Under the financial inclusion umbrella, Gram Tarang also distributes payments to beneficiaries of welfare schemes such as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, Manrega, Social Security Pension Payment and others. Till date, Gram Tarang has distributed more than 2 billion rupees, that is about 38.29 million US dollars, earmarked for Manrega and Social Security Pension in West Bengal, exploring opportunities to leverage its customer service providers network to offer its customers non-financial products and services. Gram Tarang undertook distribution of solar kits manufactured by Thrive Energy Technologies. Currently, it distributes solar kits worth 27,000 rupee to its customer service providers as power cuts are rampant in villages. The customer service providers bear 10% of the solar kit cost upfront, 50% in the form of equated monthly installments, while NABARD subsidizes the remaining 40%. Going forward, Gram Tarang plans to offer the same products to its rural customers. Both Gram Tarang and Gram Tarang Employability Training Services are planning to expand in the next few years. Gram Tarang plans to extend its services to about 20,000 villages by increasing the size and strength of its customer service providers network. During this time, Gram Tarang Employability Training Services aims to expand its training network outside of East India and to other states with high school dropout rates such as Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Assam and Meghalaya. Gram Tarang has provided financial inclusion to more than 1.2 million rural customers and about 50% of these accounts holders are women. It has provided employment to more than 4,600 local individuals as customer service providers for the company with more than 60% of them being women. Gram Tarang has distributed more than 2 billion rupees that is around 38.29 million US dollars under Manrega and Social Security Pension in West Bengal. Gram Tarang has successfully trained more than 10,000 students in Eastern India with a strong placement record of more than 80% in recognition of its contribution to the Naxal hit states. Gram Tarang Employability Training Center was adjudged as the overall best performer for the year 2011-12 by National Skill Development Corporation. Gram Tarang chose to begin operations in the low 
income state, Gram Tarang chose to begin operations in the low income states due to their low level of financial inclusion. Any effort to provide financial access had potential to create a significant impact in mainstreaming rural population from these states. Gram Tarang opened more than 1 million no frills account in the states such as Odisha, West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Manrega and pension plan payments are currently provided in West Bengal with plans to extend them to other low income states by the end of 2012 by Gram Tarang. Conclusion Let us conclude from the different case studies that we have perused so far. It is imperative for the Indian economy to not only sustain high growth rates over many years but also ensure that such growth is inclusive so as to free millions of our disadvantaged citizens from indignity of poverty. India's rural transformation requires corporate partnership and social enterprises initiatives spread across the length and breadth of the nation for inclusive rural connect, women empowerment, sanitation, health hygiene, electrification, education and respectful livelihood for the economically challenged masses. This is where the sociopreneurs step in, the concepts and relevance of social enterprises and their impact and operations in the Indian ecosystem. The inclusive of five case studies on social entrepreneurs gives a perspective view of the governance and social connect exhibited by these entrepreneurs and their unique business philosophy and ecologically sensitive business strategy for their social connect. Thank you.